guys welcome back to my channel it's a girl i mean jay here and just in case you're seeing my face for the first time you're welcome to join us so first of all i want to appreciate all of you that have been supporting and showing love to me on this channel by either by subscribing liking my videos or leaving a comment like guys i enjoy 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 reading all your comments like it's been very enlightening for me so keep them coming don't hold them back so today's video is from ben shapiro who says um um oh it's a facts episode two i guess it's something we have started doing on this channel say facts episode two despite what you are told china is dying wow okay let's take a look at it guys china you've been told is a rising power Soon, you've been told they'll surpass the United States as the center of a new world order. Their annual gross domestic product averaged 9% growth from 1989 to 2022. Their standing military has 2 million active personnel. Their tentacles reach into Africa, the Middle East, South America. The real story of China is far, far scarier because China is a power in a state of inevitable collapse. The only question is when and how much damage they'll do before the Chinese regime implodes. That's because China has at least five serious problems. Problem number one, demographics. China is currently, according to geopolitical strategist Peter Zihan, the fastest aging society in all of human history. A healthy demographic chart in terms of age looks something like a pyramid. Most of the citizens will be young, a solid number will be middle-aged, and at the very top, the fewest will be elderly. Even in 2000, the warning signs were clear in China. You can see the dramatic lack of people in the nine and below group. That did not change. So here's what that same chart looks like by 2020. Look how the vast bulk of the population is now over the age of 30. There is no supporting demographic base to pay all the bills. This is why, as Ihan says, China now has a, quote, completely terminal demography. China currently has a birth rate of less than 1.2 per woman. It's worse in urban areas. The decline of Chinese birth rates can be attributed to two factors. First, the Chinese government's evil one-child policy. Implemented in 1980, ended in 2016, it resulted in 3 to 4% more boys than girls being born thanks to sex-selective abortion and infanticide, families literally killing off female babies in the womb or afterward. According to the Chinese government itself, the one-child policy prevented 400 million births. China's population has already peaked. It's now dropping. The question is, as the population ages in a heavily Marxist system, who's going to pay the bills? This brings us to problem number two, lack of innovation. If China were free, you know, an innovative, robust economy, it might be possible to stave off disaster for at least a little while. After all, the generation of new products and services might allow China to thrive economically in the short term. That would buy time for the social system to transition away from high levels of government support and towards something more sustainable. But China has no innovation, thanks to its state-controlled mercantilist schemes. Right now, the entire Chinese economy is reliant on producing things at scale, undercutting foreign markets, and stealing technology. As the young working population declines, producing things at scale becomes a lot more difficult. Cheap labor goes away. China is trying to fill the gap right now with robotics. In 2021, China represented 52% of global worldwide industrial robot installation. There's a problem with this. If a robot can do a job more cheaply than a human, why produce in China at all, as opposed to somewhere that isn't a geopolitical hellhole run by an authoritarian communist government? Furthermore, China has to import all those robots, largely from Japan. Then there is the problem of innovation. It turns out when you nationalize all innovation, you kill it. The solution is you rob everybody else of their IP, and then you try to recreate it. Some reports suggest that Chinese IP theft costs the United States alone up to $600 billion per year. This is an unsustainable growth model. It always leaves Chinese IP well behind Western IP. They're stealing somebody else's technology and then they're trying to re-engineer it. This is particularly true when it comes to microchips, where China manufactures a lot of basic microchips, but has actually been cut off from the world's markets for sophisticated microchips. All of which brings us to the third problem, debt. If you can't pay for things through innovation or through manufacturing, you gotta get a lot of money from someplace else. Well, China's growth has been disproportionately funded by debt. The country's debt to GDP ratio is at least 159%. That is 60% higher than the global rate, according to the S&P Global Ratings. The nation's total stock of corporate, household, and government debt is now over 300% of GDP. It comprises 15% of all debt globally, according to the Institute of International Finance. Because Chinese banks are owned by the state, 
their decision-making is rooted in government interests rather than profitability. That means they're probably carrying trillions of dollars in bad loans. As Professor Antonio Graceffo writes, quote, it is extremely unlikely that the Chinese Communist Party will be able to solve all of these problems or completely turn the economy around. The Chinese economy is too big and too complex to be able to remedy the deeply ingrained issues that have become endemic. The best visible example of Chinese economic hollowness is its ghost cities, literally cities that are just empty. China is chock-filled with these so-called ghost cities. They include, apparently, up to 65 million empty units of housing. Why did this happen? Well, politicians borrowed insane amounts of money for make-work projects, with the government then encouraging people to put their retirement money into buying empty shells of apartments, assuring them the prices would continue to rise. This has generated a looming real estate catastrophe because none of these apartments are livable. But Chinese citizens keep putting their money in real estate because it allows them the illusion of actual ownership of something. And in a communist country, even the illusion of ownership is better than the reality that the government runs everything and you don't own anything. China has yet another problem, military problems. Now, everybody thinks China is a powerful military country, and they kind of are. But with China on the brink economically and demographically, they might be expected to get more aggressive militarily. And again, China does keep threatening surrounding areas, including most prominently Taiwan. China's two million man army is indeed huge, but manpower isn't everything as we saw in the Ukraine war. Like Russia, the Chinese military isn't up to snuff. China relies on older, less sophisticated chips, according to the RAND Corporation. The United States has worked to control import of chips into China, which means that their Chinese tech is just not as good as American military tech. The United States has even prevented Chinese companies from receiving software updates, spare parts, or technological input from Americans. This is because American-made products are more advanced than products made in China. Take, for example, Lockheed Martin, the world's leading and most advanced military, global security, and aerospace company. Or Tesla, obviously an exceptionally innovative company. Another example of a company creating advanced products here in the United States is our trusted partner, GenuCell. You've heard about GenuCell on my daily show. GenuCell has great American-made products like their dark spot corrector. GenuCell couldn't be created or manufactured in China with the same level of innovation and care. That's why we're thankful to be working with GenuCell, a company using cutting-edge ingredients and products like their Ultra Retinol Moisturizer with a retinol alternative for safe use in the sun. If you go to GenuCell.com slash Ben right now, you can get your dark spot corrector and ultra retinol moisturizer in the GenuCell most popular package. Give it a try. I think you'll love it. If you don't, they're going to give you a 100% money back guarantee. So head on over to GenuCell.com slash Ben right now. Again, that's GenuCell.com slash Ben. My wife has tried it. My mom has tried it. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to like it. GenuCell.com slash Ben. According to Chris Miller, author of Chip War, China now lags the United States by up to a decade. What's more, China doesn't yet have the capacity to project deep water power. They have a lot of boats in their Navy. And their navy is effective in coastal zones, but they have no capacity to project power beyond those zones, which means the Taiwan and the South China Sea are squarely in China's crosshairs. Because 92% of all sophisticated microchips are produced in Taiwan, we could see China attempt to blockade the island with the threat of destroying TSMC, that's Taiwan's microchip manufacturing company. Finally, you have problem number five, dictatorship. Underlying all of these other problems is the biggest one of all. China is a one-party dictatorship. While fools like Thomas Friedman of the New York Times write that, quote, China's one-party autocracy can impose the important policies needed to move a society forward, the reality is the reverse. Because the dictatorship is the be-all end-all, it can't allow the freedom and innovation necessary to grow the country and fix its problem. Instead, dictator Xi Jinping, in an attempt to enshrine his own power, has doubled down, seeking more economic control, more autarky, greater militarism, more carbon-based fossil fuels to push manufacturing growth. China is in very serious trouble. Does this mean that China is going to break apart into a million polities? No, but it means that the current regime is on shaky footing. And that means they are likely to get very aggressive in the near term in an attempt to shore up their foundation. Because if they don't, that collapse is going to happen sooner rather than later. Wow, guys. Uh, uh, this has got to be one of the best videos I've seen from Ben Shapiro. Like, seeing him displaying his prowess. Like, what? I love this. Uh, and and to be frank, I actually learned a lot from from this video. You guys could have seen it from my face. Like I was trying to absorb all the knowledge. I think I I, I would love Ben Shapiro to be doing videos like this. What do you guys think? And this brings me to my comment about this whole fact game. That guys, this is what happens when you try to play God. We don't want to allow nature to run its course. We want to be the ones to like we want to show ourselves at every given point. Imagine. Trying to dictate the number of children each family should have, and I just pray it's never, it's, it doesn't get too late for them, and they realize the uh, the uh, that the 
the the the error of their wrongdoings and you know retreat their their steps. Well, I wish them all the best, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Take care of yourself. Be you, do you, but do not conform. And be happy, guys. Bye.